Alright guys, so I am in an F-18 Hornet and my good friend Master J is in the other Hornet. He's representing the American side and I'm flying the good old Canadian SCF-18s. Alright, so here we go. We're going in for a Fox 2 fight. So he's got missiles and I got missiles. Four Sidewinders each. There's the merge. And we're going for a one circle here. And he's fired one and missed. Almost got him. So these uh, Fox 2 fights with the guns is a little bit different than the only gun fights that we do uh, in the sense that you're going to try to stay a lot closer to each other because you're trying to jam the wes of the Sidewinder. Um, you Basically you're trying to stay close enough so that a Sidewinder can't hit you. And we're not using the 9Xs, these are Sidewinder M's and I thought I could hit them there but I missed. So you got to stay close to each other and really oftentimes this comes down to a gun kill more so than a sidewinder kill but uh it still makes things interesting you know you got missiles flying everywhere uh, i might have hit him there i'm not sure but i had the shoot cue so all right he's coming around and he actually might get a kill here. Oof. Dude, the way he crossed over my head like that, I, I was sure he was gonna buzzsaw me in half there. Um, so anyway, uh, these Fox 2 fights, there they get interesting sometimes. Most often they result in a gun kill, but uh, it's still, you know. Are we possibly, he just missed a sidewinder there, possibly moving into a right fight on the deck here. And so you'll notice that he's also pre-flaring, and pre-flaring makes it difficult for the sidewinder when it comes off the rail. It works really well against the 9X as well. Obviously we're not using 9X, we got the uh, AIM-9 M's here today. And I'm pretty sure he's going to reverse his turn into me here, yep as expected so it looks like we're moving into a one circle possible rolling scissor here and notice how he's afterburner on guys i hear a lot of people say afterburners should be off in these situations but it's like you're trying to max perform the aircraft you want the afterburner on and if he comes out of afterburner i'm gonna kill him pretty easily so now, if I fire a Sidewinder at him and he wants to pull throttle for a second and flare, then that's a different story. Now, here, I've gotten behind him. He's actually extending away from me, which is a pretty big mistake. I'm going to Fox 2 here, but the sun's there, so it might get a little hairy. And Splash 1. There we go. I really didn't think that was going to hit him because the sun was right there. <laughs> well done. Well done. Good fight to Master J. Great work. Alright, so here we go with the next round. So you can see these Fox 2 fights, they, they make things a little bit more interesting. A lot of times you're taking pretty stupid sidewinder shots like I did. Um, I usually don't fire a sidewinder anywhere near the sun, but you know, sometimes you do stupid things and you get rewarded for it. So 
and you can see like we're not really trying to stay at max rate speeds unless we end up uh, at, a, at a rate fight on the deck then yeah I'll go for that but for the most part I'm trying to stay at min radius speeds there's the merge looks like we're going one circle again and I'm trying to stay at the min radius speed so that I can whip my nose around quickly and get a sidewinder off at him and you can see here he's pre-flaring trying to get a lock that's not a good solution like, there's no way that Sidewinder would hit him, so I'm not even going to bother firing. Um, you can see I was pre-flaring as well. He's flying through my flares now, and he's coming head on here. Sidewinder, oh, that was close. Alright, so possible gun solution. Nope. I thought I could do it there. And so it looks like he's gonna try to continue to stay one circle with me here. Possibly. Okay, that's a good miss. I didn't think that one would hit, so I didn't even flare. And right here, I might be able to get guns on him. I think I hit him. I think I hit him at least once. Okay, I definitely hit him at least at least once or twice, and he's got to be feeling that because it was right center mass on his aircraft, so I should have messed up some pretty critical systems there. And Okay, looks like he's actually extending away from the fight. He's pointing his tail at me. He's in big trouble here. I think his aircraft's messed up, so we're just going to go ahead and finish him off. Splash one. So really, that fight was over when he crossed my nose a couple turns back, and I sprayed across center mass on his aircraft there. So you can see jamming the Wes of the uh, Sidewinders is very, very important in this kind of fight. Um, if you don't do it, it's it's going to end rather quickly when the guy just points his nose at you and Fox 2s you. Um, if you can jam the Wes, then you end up kind of back in the normal gunfight situation that we're usually in. However, even then, you still got to think about um, the envelope of the Sidewinder. So a lot of times you might have to pre-flare as you cross the guy's nose even though you think he maybe can't get guns on you there is a possibility that a sidewinder could come off and hit you right in the face right so there's just a different layer of things to think about makes the fight a little bit more interesting and so here we go for merge i'm going to see if i can actually whip my nose around and sidewinder him right here and wrap this fight up i think it can be done distance looks good nose is coming around we got a Seeker Fox 2. Splash 1. Yep, so he didn't jam the Wes there, so he didn't stay close enough to me. I think this will be the last round we'll do and we'll just see how it plays out there's the merge and I'm going for the vertical go ahead and try to lock him up the first turn is always the most dangerous for sidewinders he flares that one off and I pulled a little bit too hard so I lost too much energy I've dumped my nose which is kind of dangerous because it looks like he's about to hold the high ground on me here 
he's doing real good with his maneuvering here. Gonna continue to try to turn into him. He's crossing with the. He's pretty much about to point his nose at me. And I made a critical mistake there. I didn't turn as he turned. And I kind of gave him my six there. Uh, that's a very, very bad mistake on my part. And you see Flight this? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm in trouble. And I would be very lucky to survive. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Alright. Time to leave. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're going to do our quick little tack view review. I'm going to do this one round that I think was the longest and most interesting one. And so we'll just go ahead and fast forward a little bit. So there's this. So what's happening here is we talked about jamming the WES for the Sidewinders. That's the Weapon Employment Zone. And uh, that's spelled W-E-Z. You'll have to excuse my writing. I'm doing that with a mouse. And so assume what's happening here. Assume that the bandit continues straight. What I'm trying to do is do a slight offset and then a lead turn across his tail. And so what that's going to do is we're going to be really tight as we, right here, as he turns in and I turn in, we're going to be very close, which should jam his wets. It basically removes the sidewinder problem for me. And it also puts me in a pretty good position uh, more than 90% of the time, unless the guy knows exactly what he's doing, you end up on his six and it ends up being a quick fight. And so what Master J is doing here is he is uh, denying my turning room by coming and turning into my direction as I try to do the lead turn. It's not going to work. Had he continued straight, it would have worked. Okay. So we'll go ahead and watch from there. And so the merge ends up kind of offset from where it was supposed to happen. We go into a one circle fight. You can see he's getting better degrees per second at 18.5. I'm getting 17.4. At the moment of merge, he had a truer speed of 510, I had 460. So he was faster than me through that. Um, I think I just didn't pull that hard on my stick. You can see I'm pulling 6.8. He's pulling, he was at seven point something there, eight for a couple fractions of seconds there. And so this is way too close for a sidewinder shot, right? Doesn't work. And I get the gun shot. I obviously go for the gun because I, I don't think the sidewinder would work. And it comes close. Goes right beside him and right over the top. Damn. That would have been nice. And so we end up in a situation. Now this is the part where I dove down a little bit too hard. I would have liked to stay a little bit more in the horizontal plane. Um, because essentially what I've done is given him the high ground. And now it's easy for him to just shoot down at me. And it's harder for me to point my nose up. Right? So I've kind of given him a bit of an advantage here. Not a huge deal. But it's still not where I really want to be. And now he's done. What I just said that I didn't like that I did so it's good right and I think here I let off a sidewinder yep there it is because I thought possibly again not a good one neither is his so it doesn't work and so we end up now he's back in the vertical and so we're continuing in relation to the bandit these are all one circle fights as most um, fox 2 fights are going to be and this is the part where he crossed under my nose and I hit him center mass, I think. Is that what happened there? Or no, I think, no, this is the other one. That was another fight. And this one, this is the one where I wasn't sure if I even hit him at all. Like, I don't think that this hit did anything to him. I don't even think he felt it, to be honest. Very minimal damage. Maybe a couple hits at best. And so here we are, he's continuing to turn into me, and this is the one where he almost kills me. Look at that. That is so close. 
wow right over the aircraft and my rounds are even closer oh my god like right over his head I think both of us are very very lucky to walk away from this and this is a good example of why you know we make these gentleman agreements where if we're coming nose on with each other um, and nose on doesn't mean like if he's here and he's got a high aspect gunshot like that's fine you can take that but these situations I don't love these where he's head on and I'm head on because like this is 50 50 man everyone's just spraying and probably both of you or one of you is going to die and there's not really a lot of skill so I like to do the gentleman's agreement where you got to maneuver onto the guy's you know rear aspect somewhere and you can hit him and that has some skill to it in my opinion it's like hey I was better than you and I ended up on your six and I killed you you know there's a little bit more skill involved than that just my opinion so we end up in this uh, little situation on the deck. This is where I thought that we were possibly going to end up in a, in a raid fight. Again, Sidewinder way too close. Uh, my Sidewinder didn't do anything. I'm not even sure if they had track when they came off the rail. And so, yeah, right here I was like, all right, we might be moving into a raid fight. Jay almost hits the ground here, has to avoid that. And so I'm starting to try to build my speed up to the max raid speed of 360 to 370-ish. And you can see I'm really coming around. I'm pulling 14 out. Let me see here. I'm pulling 16, 17, 18. You can see Jay here struggling with his low speed and almost hitting the ground, pulling 9 degrees a second, right? And so I'm going to come around. And you can see now I'm in a good position. He ends up kind of tightening down his turn, which is good in the sense that he didn't just elongate to try to build energy because that would have put him exactly where I wanted him to be, right? And instead he pulls a little bit harder and ends up creating a high aspect situation for me, which makes it very difficult for a sidewinder or even a gunshot. A gunshot is possible, but very difficult in that situation. And so I use my vertical, I go up and he does the correct thing because as we know, if we look at the geometry here, if he just turned and continued his turn, um, I would have just come around right so as I come this way he turns up into me maneuvers in relation to the bandit and we are back in a one circle fight and then we end up in this rolling scissor thing where we're both actively trying to put our nose on each other you can see I'm kind of shooting out in front here just a little bit, pulling hard, and now he's off in front. And at this point, he just kind of gives it up. You know, look at my truer speed, 222, he's 306, and he's out in front. And this is the part, I think the sun, you can't see it in tack view, but oh, there it is. Yeah, you can see the sun, wow. All right, so you can see he's turning into the sun. This is the part where I didn't want to shoot the uh, Sidewinder at him. and But I'm like, what the hell? We'll just shoot one off just for shits. And it actually tracks. <laughs> and yeah, it's, uh, it's with the thing with the Sidewinders, when you fire them, I guess I'm not pointed at the sun, but the bloom of the sun made it feel like it was, you know, in my, my HUD area-ish to the point where I thought maybe the Sidewinder wouldn't track and also he was flying towards the sun, right? So I was like, if he can lead the Sidewinder kind of in this direction, there's a very high possibility that the Sidewinder can get confused. There's no better flare than the sun itself, right? And so I knew the probability was kind of low, but got lucky and we get the impact there. All right, so that's going to be the tack view for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Big thank you to Master J for helping out with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, at least found it entertaining. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.